author is funded by the Pacific Northwest Writers Association, supporting writers from pen to publication since 1955. To learn more about the PNWA and their yearly conference, please go to pnwa.org. Hi, this is Bill Knauer for Author Magazine, and I'm here at Town Hall in Seattle, Washington with Katie Hafner, author of Mother, Daughter, Me. Katie, welcome to Author. Thanks for having me. When did story first light up as something interesting to you, just story in general? Oh, since uh, the first story I ever wrote, the first reported piece I ever wrote, yeah. it was a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's this little compact story with a little bit of tension and then resolution you know, crisis and yep. resolution and the end of it. And yeah. I thought, I am addicted to now this telling stories. This was journalistic stories, yeah. And this was my very first job, which was at, out of journalism school, at the North Lake Tahoe Bonanza, which was the name of the newspaper. <laughs> and yeah, I was like one of three reporters, right. and one of, uh, one of them was the sports reporter. And uh, it was just story after story after story. I mean, I covered a avalanches. And there was an avalanche, a big avalanche, the year I was there. And there was the story of that, and of those human drama, and of courage, and of searching, and rescuing. And, and I thought, this is what makes us whole. It's, it's, what, it's what makes us human, is stories. So eventually, then, you went from writing small stories to a little bit longer stories. And then you began to write books. But these were researched, journalistic, essentially, books, your first five. Right. Um, did you enjoy that length of a project? It's yeah. a whole different experience yeah. than, a, than an article probably written under deadline. Yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Why I loved did you it. love it? Because you get to know these, you know, when you're, you really skim the surface, what they say about journalists yeah. is we know a little bit about a whole lot of stuff, and then you really get, I mean, it's, think about it. I mean, you get to really immerse yourself. But you in like it. immersing yourself. It's, not everybody likes to immerse themselves in things, but you enjoy that. Yeah, and then you know you can get out. I mean, that's the other <laughs> thing is then, you know, it's like I'm not, I don't work in a biology lab where it's like constant, you know, for the rest of my life. It's like two or three years of really learning a subject. Yeah. And then, and, and then, you know, boiling it down to a book and writing what you think will interest people telling the story, figuring yeah, out how to It's got to be a story somehow. It's got to be a story. Everything has to be a story. And telling the story, finding the characters who are going to be the most interesting, right. and tell the story the best through whom you can tell your sto the, their story or the story of the... One of my favorite things to do in writing books is to find an inanimate object and tell the story like through... Like a piano. Like a piano. <laughs> so a couple of my books have been like that. In one, I lived in Berlin, outside of, outside of Berlin, um, in Potsdam, which is right where the Berlin Wall um, went. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when the wall was built, Potsdam landed on the eastern side of the wall, and I found this one incredible house. So I told 150 years in the life of this one house, and it was a, a way to describe a world through this one grain of sand. That's fabulous. I loved doing that, and then I wanted to do the, something like that with a piano. So I did, several years later, I found one piano and told the story of this one piano. Well, so then you move on to a book for which you did not need to do much research, which is why you're here with me now, which is Mother, Daughter, Me, and this is a memoir. This is a straight up memoir about your relationship with your mom and your daughter, among other people, but primarily those two. And what was that, A, why did you decide to write it? And B, what was that like, moving from a journalistic approach to writing mm. to something so personal yeah. and so close? Right, I mean, I had, so, I had never written anything personal in my life. Well, actually, that's not true. When I was at Circuits at the New York Times, I, um, I did write a piece about buying a rug online, and I felt like exposed. It felt like too, too, much, too much information about my taste in rugs. <laughs> and, and, far cry from what you did there. And, yeah, and then, and then uh, so I actually did not set out to write this memoir, which is kind of interesting. I didn't, no. so my mother moved in with my daughter and me, and um, I had all these fairy tale ideas about how great it could be. She hadn't raised me, which is key to the story. I was taken away from her when I was little. Um, she had been an alcoholic. 
So I think children of alcoholics in particular have this sort of gauzy notion, these fantasies about the kind of parent they could have. And so she moves in with my daughter and me. We were so sort of, I thought we'd be skipping through the daisies. And we called it, in fact, our year in Provence. And it very quickly turned into <laughs> purgatory and then hell. Yeah. Yes, yeah, not, pro, yeah, right, exactly. And so, Alcatraz. And so, uh, so we were about two or three months into this experiment in multi-generational living. And um, I did something particularly cruel. I, we were in a Trader Joe's and uh, she, because I didn't realize how much anger and bitterness I really had and until this moment in the Trader Joe's when she had a bad hand and she had lost her strength in her right hand and she was reaching up a, to a high shelf to reach a half gallon of lactate and you know usually I would just get it for her and I turned my back. Yeah. in this cruel act. Because you felt she'd been turning her back on you probably most of your life. I guess that's right. I hadn't thought of it that way. Yeah, yeah exactly. You have to do it. And I thought to myself, what is going on with me? What? And so I went home that night, and I couldn't sleep, and I couldn't sleep, and I, and I wrote up that scene of us in the Trader Joe's and me turning my back. And then I wrote another scene, which was... Um, my daughter, whose name is Zoe, Zoe and I were sitting at the dining room table and I was talking to her about whether my mother should move in with us and she says yes and I call the, these the us paragraphs and she then asks, but what will happen to us? Because we were very, Such very... Such a mature question. I know. It really is. I know, I know. And Quite I... Anyway. Yeah. I know and I say, well, you know, and so I talk about the, uh, I talk about the us that loves to go to In-N-Out Burger and the us that loves to listen to Santa Baby on the radio, and but then there's the, um, that's the everyday us, but then there's the deeper us that got over her dad's death together and, and was still grieving in a lot of ways. Anyway, so I sent the, the, the Trader Joe's paragraph and the us paragraphs um, to a few friends, and they said, this is really compelling. I didn't know you ever wrote anything personal, and I said, I don't. And then I sent it to my agent, and this was like on a Tuesday, and he said, yeah, I'll read it over the weekend. I said, actually, would you mind reading it now? And he called me back in like half an hour, and he said, this is really, really interesting. Now you got to write it. And then, yeah, well, <laughs> and well, but you, it, what's interesting is you said you didn't have to research it, and I thought, great, no research, and it'll, I'll be done in right. eight months. Mm -mm. It was very, it was much harder in a completely different way. Yeah, now you have to... Because now you have you can't use the book to punish. No. You can't use the book to aggrandize or to make you a victim. You have to tell the story in a way that's of service to someone right. to someone exactly. else. Yeah, that's exactly. Whole, you've never done that with your life. No. In fact, I had been to therapists over the years. Right. Because of um, and I don't know, maybe I just got a series of duds, but <laughs> they I never got it or it never helped in a deep way. But there was something about writing the book, which by the way, the first drafts were terrible because it was like a, I was like a journalist writing from this distance, like this book about this person named Katie Hafner by this journalist named Katie Hafner. And then I had to get closer and closer, which was really uncomfortable. Yeah. And um, in fact, my editor, she was less the first editor on the book, so they were a tag team of editors, and the first one was more like a therapist than an editor. You know how in the margins, you know, in the, yeah, on it. Word documents, yeah. the comments? Uh -huh. It was n instead of, gee, I don't think this really flows here, or this doesn't really belong in this chapter. She, none of that, she'd go, when you said that, what were you thinking? You know? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, well, and she said, you need to really understand what was motivating you there. And I'm like, and so, so it took all this sort of, you know, plumbing of my own psyche, which I had really never done, in order to understand it, in order to tell it. Yes. It's one thing to get it and understand it, and then you have to convey it, and not just that, but you have to convey it in a way that people don't feel like you're just gazing at your own navel. No. That they feel they understand it and it somehow, and this is key, relates to them. Okay, I have one more question for you. 
And I'd like you to finish this sentence for me. If writing, all the writing you've done in your life to this point, if writing has taught you anything, it's taught you what? How to tell a story. Yeah. Do you use that in your life beyond the writing? Uh, in order to tell a story, we need to hear it and we need to see it. And so I've, what I've learned is to listen and to watch.